Hello, welcome to part one of the vlog of me building my epic board. So this is uh, for Epic 40K, if anyone's not familiar with it, it is uh, very, very small scale, 40K. So this isn't true epic scale, I'm doing this at 10 millimeter instead of uh, six to eight millimeter, which I think is epic at Adeptus Titanicus scale. So it's a little bit scaled up so I can actually see the miniatures to paint them, but you get the overall feel of a massive battle and this is just a small selection of what I've painted so far to give you an idea of how the board scales to the models. Um, part one is going to be about building these tiles and getting them sprayed up to the stage they're at now before I move on with any further building. Um, and as you can see from the uh, strange looking layout, I've actually tried to copy uh, the inspiration for this which is Final Liberation Epic 40k, the PC game from 1997. Um, so I've gone for that isometric layout. So uh, without wobbling on too much, uh, let's get into it. And here we are at the landing page. So there were two options. There was a campaign mission map, um, which was awesome. And then there was uh, up to 1v1, I think up to four player potentially. Uh, you each picked a side and your forces and you uh, took turns uh, playing the turn based uh, battles, but I've got something already set up to show, and this is the wonderfully charming um, world map. It's so old school, where you've got the little icons down here, you can barely make out what they are. It's fantastic. So let's get underway to see what the game looks like. And this is the inspiration for it, that uh, isometric 45 degree whatever view where the roads are actually running diagonally rather than top to bottom or left to right like you would normally see on a 40k battlefield right our battlefields run uh, in straight lines up and down or left to right so that all the terrain etc matches whereas here you've got things that are not quite completely on the screen and you've got these uh, I'll just make this so you can actually see uh, start the mission and you can see that if I put the buildings to full they're actually really really nicely done for their time uh, and they super capture the craziness of like this is a, an imperial factory or whatever but everything is eagles and aquilas and gothic arches and it's just awesome um, yes it's retro as hell like look at the units they're tiny you can barely make out what they are um, but this is what I'm going for and these collapsed uh, gothic church buildings and stuff like this and there's this massive prison at the end of this particular level and you've got ruins um, and there's, some, there's an orc vehicle hiding there old school one and uh, this is the look that I'm going to go for so let's see how well we do Right, so as I mentioned in the intro, it's time to start work on these tiles. And in order to get the kind of grid-based look and have something easy to store, I've gone once again for a box uh, with polystyrene layout. However, this time I'm not cutting my own out of plastic, um, which led to some imperfections. I bought um, some of these MDF pre-cut uh, pieces. Now, I bought these from Laser Cut Designs in the UK. Um, double check that before I post and put it on the little uh, pop-up on the bottom here somewhere. Um, and I'm going to put these together uh, with this fast setting super glue. So it's designed for uh, wood mitres. So those are your um, cornered joints on things like skirting board. Um, you use the spray um, and it sets in. It says 10 seconds, but it's even faster than that. Um, and it means everything will go together really well. Even though this is cut with these finger joints, um, I'm a bit of an idiot when it comes to building things, so I've got some um, 90 degree uh, corner guides that I will be using to make sure these pieces um, butt up against each other at 90 degrees as the glue sets. Uh, these are not exactly the same shape. Um, there is uh, an end that aligns with an overhang, um, and then this piece butts up against the overhang like this to form the box. So what I will do is I will be going through and where the corner or the edge joint has to match up against uh, this piece, I'll be lining them all up like this and then taking a Sharpie and just marking uh, which edge has to have the glue put on it and butts up against the other one to make sure that I don't get it wrong. Right, so you should always do a dry fit and I've got to make sure I've got it orientated the right way, which is why it's marked with the Sharpie. It's going to go in like this. Um, and uh, this piece here will brace uh, the frame of the MDF so it doesn't slip into this little recess that's there because the three mils are a bit thin. And then I'll hold it there for the five, ten seconds it takes to cure. And then I'll take it off and do the next one. So the glue uh, goes along this edge, uh, 
as you normally would with super glue, like this. Uh, the spray, you spray it on the receiving piece, push together and hold in place. And that's set. Now I know that this type of plastic the super glue won't stick to, so make sure whatever you're using um, is not going to get stuck uh, from any overspill that squeezes out of the joint here. And then you can see that's quite a nice 90 degree corner. Um, so I shall be doing that all the way around, and then I'll be gluing this frame to the base piece using the same process, and then everything should come out square. So that took about a minute or so to do, and it's fairly strong where the glue's been uh, adhered around the edges. It's pretty square. If I get this and match it up, I can see that the sides are within a degree or so of square, which compared to the plastic is great. Obviously, in joinery terms, that's not perfect, but we'll live with it. Um, so now I just need to cut and fit uh, my polystyrene in the middle. The depth of this is 25 millimeters inside, same as the thickness of the polystyrene, so it should fit perfectly, and it'll get glued on with some polyurethane glue, which I'll show shortly. What I think I'm gonna do, though, is I think I'm gonna run a little bit of slightly thinned uh, wood glue uh, around the inside of the joint here. You can just see it bows slightly where the glue has grabbed in some places and not in others, and super glue can be a bit brittle over long term, so I think using both means it should last. Right, nothing fancy here, just going to cut the polystyrene with a knife. Uh, new blade, uh, highly recommend this knife, it's the Alpha knife. Uh, the blades are razor sharp and last for ages, and it has this turnable uh, mechanism for locking the blade, which is really good so it never slips, and it's got your standard snap-off blade. When cutting polystyrene, uh, cut at as shallow an angle as possible. Um, so you've got a long cutting action to avoid ripping the bobbles as much as possible, but it still makes a bit of mess. But these are going inside um, the frame, so there's no need to worry about having to get accurate cuts like you'd want with a hot wire cutter if you were doing something that you can actually see. So I've done my uh, width here. I'm uh, going to cut it in a strip and then cut it into two pieces. Um, no fancy layout uh, techniques here, just uh, a ruler and a really ancient uh, carpenter's square and uh, get this cut up and put in. Right, a complete fluke for me. Uh, I actually cut this to the exact size, which is brilliant, especially seeing as the markings on polystyrene are not that accurate. Um, however, that meant it was a little snug in the frame, and I definitely learned from the last board uh, not to cut it exactly to fit, because when the glue, etc., goes inside and it expands, it pushes the frame, and this caused it to bow last time here, so it stuck out and the pieces didn't go together. So this time, you can see uh, there's a teeny tiny gap, which will be covered over with the layer that goes on top. This is just there for bulk. Um, and you can see that the laser cutting was totally worth it because that is a perfect fit. So that is, it's got to be down to fractions of a millimetre accuracy on the tolerance of the cutting. So what will happen now is I'll get the glue out and we'll, we'll get on with sealing it in place. Okay, so I'm back using the similar sort of glue to what I used on the previous build. Uh, this one is a different brand. This is Gator glue. Um, it's still a polyurethane glue, so it's a, um, a water or moisture reactive resin type glue, I think. Um, essentially, it expands slightly, um, so it will bite into, hence the clever name, um, the material and really bond it together. But that does mean that we have to weigh things down because foam, obviously being so light, it will push up slightly, exaggerated movement there, to um, put something heavy on top while it sets. I bought this brand this time round um, because one, it was cheaper, and that's me, and also it sets in 30 minutes, so it's a lot, lot faster than the Gorilla one, which can take like three or four hours of leaving it there um, when it's not so warm. So I'm gonna put some in here, very thin, because you don't need a lot of it, and I've got a plastic off cut for spreading it out, and uh, we'll get on with that. Right, you can see it's a very, very fine layer. You really don't need a lot of this stuff. Um, and in order to get it to go off quickly, uh, you spray one of the surfaces with water. So a little uh, spray bottle here. I'm just gonna literally wet the surface. You don't need much more than that. It goes in, uh, down like this. And then I'm going to put a rather weighty uh, paint can on top to make sure nothing goes anywhere and I shall leave it like that for half an hour. So uh, being the mostly sensible person, I'm going to 
be putting on my respirator and some gloves, which I should have done to start with. Um, it doesn't film very easily. And I will be repeating this uh, eight more times and hopefully get them all done this morning. Shaky cam update, because this is a vlog after all. Uh, I was a bit paranoid that the edges of the polystyrene would bow up slightly around the can, because this stuff is super bendy. Um, so a couple of boxes to spread the weight out made of a plastic it won't stick to, pro tip. Um, and then it's weighted down with a pretty heavy can on top, so everything should be fine. Right, that glue did set really fast actually, and this is super light, pretty durable. The polystyrene really helps stop the board flexing um, too much, which it won't do anyway because it's quite thin. Um, so next up is to cover this with something um, so that it's got a nice surface for all the other um, for all the other tile pieces to fit onto. So what I've got here is some cork tiles. They are. The 300 by 300 millimeters, which is exactly the same size as this, super convenient. Um, four mil thick, so they're not too thick, and they're super light and quite cheap. I bought these off of eBay. Um, oh, look, they're brand new. That's nice to know. Um, so what I'm going to do is, again, use the Gator glue, which you don't need a lot of, to secure this over the top uh, like that. So in some areas... I'm going to cover it up with a plastic layer over the top um, that I 3D printed and some other bits are going to be textured to be road surface. So overall, this is going to be really easy to go with and it doesn't add too much thickness to the board. And on one or two places where the corks are a little uneven because they're probably not the best accuracy in cutting, um, I can just sand it away once the glue's dried. Um, so it should be pretty easy to work with. Okay, so the glue on the tile has dried nicely. I did go over the join just a little here with some super glue, although some wood glue would do uh, a great job to sort of soak into the cork to keep it nice and firm, but I wanted to be quick for, for filming purposes. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is to create the street uh, layout that uh, I've designed for 3D printing. So a quick look at how I did that digitally now. Okay, voiceover time as Windows Recorder freaked out on me. This is the layout that I was using uh, to design things in SketchUp. It's a free online tool. I did these tiles to get the 45 degree look and started with like the crossroads here. And then soon realized as I did the T-junction and the straight line roads that there were these odd triangular bits uh, at the edges where the road would stop and that just didn't look quite right. So I realized I needed to kind of have those corners on each of the pieces. Um, so that the edges always match because when you're doing modular tiles each edge needs to be identical so here it had to be road and uh, textured concrete surface and then road again to make sure everything lined up properly but I realized this is going to be quite difficult and leave these strange triangular edges so I went with another option and that was to tarmac the entire board and then have scatter buildings that I would put on top However, the roads just didn't quite look right in terms of how they were laid out and how they matched that uh, isometric gaming style and these corner pieces of skin were tricky and didn't look quite right. So I scrapped this idea and thought, let's go with the uh, 90 degrees that we're used to with gaming tables. Yes, this is a hundred times easier, but uh, if you ask me, it just doesn't quite match that aesthetic that I was going for. And given the effort, I might as well do it how I wanted it. So. I was back to this design which I think really nicely matches the gaming style. So once I'd done that I broke them down into the repeated tile sections and could see that there was a lot of similarity. So the yellow pieces here um, are the same across more than one piece and the same is true for the triangles and I colour coded them to help me. Then I made uh, 3D versions of these little concrete areas by raising it up a couple of mil. And then I added these cobblestones slash pavement tiles. They're only uh, very, very small and not too detailed because my FDM printer uh, uses melted plastic and doesn't have the degree of accuracy you get from a resin printer. Uh, so this was the best I could manage and we'll see how they go next. Okay, so the outcome after printing everything was these pieces in various different shapes. And the idea being that this is a flat area that's largely we covered up by scatter pieces, so I don't mind that it's got that kind of 3D printed look, although I did set the ironing mode on the 3D printer, which gives it a very smooth top coat. But you can see it's got these little um, path stones with a, like a drain type thing just to make the edges look a little better. All right, just grab my glue bits. So what I'm going to do now is put them on the edges, and the idea being that they will form uh, this being the path edge and the building pieces will be on strips in here. And then where the two pieces are here, 
you will have uh, the road down the middle, which will be textured. And then obviously this is the butting up edges of other roads. But again, when I'm putting large terrain pieces over the top of here, it will cover up that gap nicely, or it'll be part of the road that joins to form the grid layout. So next thing up is to glue these down. I think once again, I'm going to go with the gator glue. I think this is probably the most reliable glue. And it's been easy to work with all the different materials, so it's going to give a really good bond. So I shall spread this, put it on here, uh, weigh it down, and uh, after my lunch, I'll see how it comes out. Okay, that gator glue worked out really well. This is nice and firmly stuck down and not going anywhere. So the next bit to do is to texture the roads. So I'm going to do a real classic uh, wargaming trick here, and that is use sandpaper. Wow. So this is 115 millimeters and the gap that I've got to fill here is left at 120 millimeters. So there'll be a little tiny gap down the sides which I'll probably just fill with a strip of paper to look like some form of guttering. Um, so this will be stuck in between the two gaps like that and I'll line it up as centrally as possible and then once this is glued down I'll turn it upside down and I'll trim this to fit the top surface so that it's an exact fit. Uh, sandpaper has got a paper backing um, so to stick this down I'll use PBA glue. Uh, I use this building uh, quality stuff because a bottle like this will last years and years and years. Um, put some PBA down and then I've got a piece of wood that is the same width as the as the gap and I'll place that on top to weigh it down until it dries and I've used this PVA glue for a few jobs now and it dries really really solid so it shouldn't be going anywhere. Okay I'm just putting the PVA on and giving it a nice even spread and making sure it goes right up to the edges so that it holds the sandpaper firmly throughout the life of the table. Right, so the test piece has dried overnight um, and everything's set and I went ahead and glued up all the other pieces um, and I think I've achieved that kind of 90s computer game isometric layout uh, pretty easily. Um, these swap around so that you can change the road layout and you get different shapes. Um, you know, I can put open pieces in the middle if I want to, etc. Etc. So overall I'm pretty happy. There's a couple of things that I actually ended up doing a little differently that I thought about editing out um, but I will definitely go through them now. Um, I only did the expanding glue on these two pieces. Um, on this one pretty straightforward. On this one with lots of sub parts because of the printer restrictions it actually was a nightmare to do and when I did this one I switched over to using super glue to hold these down and it was great because it uh, set in seconds because it's super glue and it's this is a porous surface so it soaked in and set no problems at all and um, I buy these industrial sized ones I'm not in that not this brand I buy like the cheaper brand um, from the home uh, wear store and there I used less than half a pot across all the boards so it was like a pound's worth of super glue or so so definitely well worth doing this uh, PVA glue set and dried perfectly and it would be a great solution but what I'm actually going to try uh, is to use some contact adhesive instead. So I really recommend this one from Evo Stick. It is a glue that you put on the two surfaces, uh, let it dry and then when you press them together they grab and bond pretty much instantly. Um, this was great but having to stack a piece of wood on top to hold it down and leave it overnight means that doing all of these pieces together is going to get really time consuming um, and this is the stuff they actually recommend as a product for or putting the cork tiles down when you're doing your flooring etc with them um, so it should work really well so you just spread it out with a plastic spreader uh, I'm in fact going to uh, use an old um, Costco card or credit card or whatever you've got something like that to kind of spread it around and uh, hopefully it should go a lot faster so you can do the PVA method um, if you have PVA glue that's what you want to use if you want to go out and buy a tin of this and again this wasn't expensive this whole tin was like five pounds um, I think this stuff's gonna be a lot quicker Additional little tip, if you're cutting this to rough size but when I'm overlaying it and then trimming it when it's when it's dry uh, cut it with a pair of scissors uh, a, it's easier, and B, it keeps the edge on your scissors nice and sharp. As with the PVA glue, spread this contact adhesive nice and evenly going to the edges, and don't overwork it, either it will start to go clumpy and you want it nice and smooth. 
and then the same on the paper pieces again getting to the edges but not going over them otherwise it gets all stringy on the surface then once everything's dry you press the paper down firmly on the surface and work it uh, from the uh, inside out to squeeze out any air and then after 24 hours it will be set absolutely rock solid and you can trim everything up all right, so that is all done. I'm very glad I switched to the super gluing these down. Uh, the one piece that I did do, which I think was this one with the expanding glue, uh, wasn't great. Uh, the gaps were a bit more difficult to deal with. You can see that I've kind of put some filler in here, uh, which when it's dry, I will sand it back. And I'm gonna move on now to the priming stage. I need to uh, use a car filler uh, primer. Uh, first of all, um, to kind of fill in um, some of the textures uh, on the, the board pieces. I don't want to use too much because I don't want to fill in the texture on the road. I just want to get that on the actual um, 3D printed parts and then hit everything with the black spray. That way everything including the edges will be done, uh, which in my previous project I left till the last step and it was a massive pain. Um, so hopefully that should sort things out. And uh, then I'll be in the stage of moving on to creating the scatter pieces that go on top. So these are gonna be raised up pieces. Uh, they will cover things like this hole um, here where the road edges have all butted up against each other. It'll cover up things like that um, and some strange bits where you get uh, you know, a corner with a triangle here or something like that. So I'll get some pieces built, uh, which I've got 3D printed parts that I've done to cover up those and move on to the painting stage. First and most important part was to hit all the, pre the 3D printed parts with the car primer. That way you get a nice uh, even surface and gets rid of those layer lines. Okay, last round of shaky cam to show that everything is done with the priming and I'm really happy with how it's come out so far. So that's the end of this episode. Uh, next one that goes up will be me uh, doing all the painting work. I'll probably start with the roads and then move on to the tile bits and uh, getting on with building the uh, inlay pieces that sit on top. Um, so catch you all next time.